Good luck to Mr. or Mrs. Pheasant there. There's a shooting season now. One of the jobs you can do if you have lots of uh, strawberries, as soon as they go into producing runners, which I found is the end of summer and autumn, I then lifted them and I've created here a square. And as you can see, the small, each individual little runner then gets its own little place here on the strawberry plot. Some of them are being a bit more vigorous than other ones. And I've tried another spot at first on the plot, it didn't seem to do well. So basically this is my propagation. And on another square which has been in a lot longer, we've got these ones here. So we'll just have to see how they get on. I got this herb from a local garden centre, which is off uh, a road off Loudoun near Nottinghamshire, and it's chicory. And I thought, I don't know how it'll grow, but apparently the roots of this were used for making um, various coffee substitutes during the war. It might, might actually do well down here, we'll have to see. Some herbs do grow very well in this clay soil, often waterlogged, and one of them basically being sage, and then another member of the sage family, which creeps across to my plot, is um, borage. Now this is superb at getting rid of um, other weeds, it, just, it sort of just envelops them. And I did read up somewhere that medieval people had found some uses for this, and among them was actually, believe it or not, uh, as a cleaner of your teeth. And, it, and, and apparently in some sort of various concoctions it was used for, for throat infections and respiratory problems but you know obviously that's not up to me it's up to you to look up whatever you use if you use herbs. If you have fruit trees at home as I do and some of them um, grow from seed from the stones and then the seed um, then makes a little sapling it's not to say that the sapling will be like the parent plant at all it might not be vigorous but some of the saplings I've got this one here for instance from a plum tree I've tried it out on the allotment and we'll just see how it gets on. Obviously that would break a fully grown uh, fruit tree so I have to see how I can go on. This Passiflora incarnata reminds me of sort of the, the Jack and the Beanstalk type thing. It starts off as being a weedy little thing and now eventually already it start to properly take over this fence. And there's beautiful flowers on it. I love the sort of the way it's able to get a grip on Things, these sort of tendrils. Don't know if you can see one there. Yeah, there's one there. And there's some more there. It just sort of wraps itself round everything as it uh, grows and clings on. Of course, I might have to tame it, but uh, for now, I'm really enjoying this. Mint, this stuff does grow, literally, as its name says, mint down here. It really does spread. Of course, if you like mint tea, then that's fine, isn't it? You know, you've got plenty there. You can also use it for other flavourings, but uh, it spreads like wildfire. Oregano does very well, of course. And rosemary, too. Used to have one of these in my garden, a curry plant, and it seems to like the clay soils as well. In this patch here by the sticks, I planted some seeds from a, um, a crab apple, um, which had fallen. Uh, crab apples have fallen, I don't know if they'll come up or not and more sage of course in the herb next to some rosemary there looks like this particular blackberry which was a cutting is going to take down here it's a bit sheltered and with my sort of uh, Robinson Crusoe's and Friday's enclosure which uh, I put up it, uh, it provides sort of a microcosm of environment down here for things to flourish the back of the plot this huge elder which I have to tame and uh, it's superb because you can get lots of elderflower from this and I did look up a recipe for this apparently what you do is you mix you have to steep the elderflower and you need lemon juice because on the, the commercial varieties of elderflower cordial have got lemon in them I suppose it adds astringency and the acid of course helps as a preservative and it's a very popular drink these days, non-alcoholic drink. And the berries, of course, many people use them to make um, uh, elderberry wine. I've not tried that myself, not really much of a drinker, but uh, always useful to use what's around you. Now this plot, right from the start, was absolutely full of six foot deep weeds like dandelions and dock leaves and all sorts of uh, horrible creeping plants. And uh, basically you know we just had to keep back dig had to keep digging and digging and digging and then taking them up again and eventually ended up with this sort of huge sort of compost heap in the middle 
which was a mixture of all the dead weeds all chopped up and then we used a guinea pig waste and it was literally three times taller than it is now but now with the worms I, I don't really dig this now because it's full of worms it's turned into the biggest worm I've ever known basically churning and they've reduced it now to about you know as I say a third of the pile as it used to be but that's all good stuff because it's actually turning what would never soil into many people like glass houses down here and I suppose I would but what I've tried to do is grow things which can be more simply managed and more hardy and you take a risk in doing that because sometimes like now which is uh, February the 29th 2016 you can get severe frost we've got it forecast and um, we had some last night and even some of the primroses I've got from garden centres have been terribly frost um, frostbitten when I woke up this morning so the, all the, even the trees I've put in there, it, it is a risk but um, having said that, I've seen to be okay with the soft fruit. Gone for squares this year, and all around the squares I've put garlic um, bulbs, which I've split up from those which have propagated from, from the previous year. And also, as I did on, on another plot, I've put a line of garlic all down the whole plot. The back of this place is an absolute mosquito haven. Some people have got ponds, etc and um, it doesn't take much and you get rainwater pooling in old um, uh, places where people collect water off the sheds and this is where mosquitoes breed so in the summertime this place is literally they are bloodthirsty they really are so I, I find it's you can plant various plants which mosquitoes don't like but you're going to have to put something on your skin basically to protect yourself from them you can of course propagate soft fruits and the red gooseberries and um, red currants and things like this on this particular plot. I haven't these haven't cropped at all yet. I think I just have had one berry off a lot of them. But from my previous plot, I had red um, gooseberries, and they seem to um, propagate under the ground and, and send runners out. So I chopped loads of runners, and I put there's lots of sort of small ones here, and they've been watered. Um, I have to bring the water down myself because the water still isn't on down here and then basically fed so I've been irrigating keeping things going while I can